uh, other method of the object class two protected methods were there one is a method called finalize yeah what is that finalize method and yesterday i mentioned about it the finalize method you may not want to override it here okay because they are saying oh it is going to be deprecated okay it has been deprecated and they want to discourage the use of finalize okay so fine we are not doing that one right so we're not overriding the finalize method another method is the clone method okay other method of the object class is the clone method right the clone method what what uh, yeah what is it uh, what does the clone method mean it means fine it is about creating a copy of the object and clone would create a copy of the object okay and the clone method has a return type of object okay but uh, it also has that you know uh, clone will not work on all objects clone works on which objects hmm? no clone only works for objects of a class which are what can be cloned <laughs> whatever is clonable okay so we have something called and there is an interface by the name clonable so any subtype of clonable right that can be cloned if it's not a subtype of clonable no it can't be cloned See, the idea here is the one who is defining the class has control on whether I allow cloning or not. You want to allow cloning? Okay. If you want to allow cloning, though we haven't used interfaces, we haven't yet seen what is an interface, but I'll just explain. If you want to allow cloning for objects of your class, right, what you need to do is you'll say, okay, this one, uh, maybe I think we can do it for the rectangle class first maybe so I, i'm just putting it here so you want to allow cloning for the objects of rectangle yeah you'll say it implements so that should be used for enabling the clone for objects of your class okay fine but one thing you understand that method is a protected method Clone method in the object class is protected. So, outside this package, will someone be able to call the clone method? Can we do in the test rectangle? Can we say, okay, I have this rectangle R1 and I want to create a, a call R1.clone. Can I just simply call it? It's in the test package. Test rectangle has a separate package. The clone method which we have from the super class, object class, is protected. Protected method is getting inherited. And but you cannot use it on the super class. And it is getting inherited. So if you want here, you can say this dot clone only within this class. Outside this class, someone trying to call clone on the object of rectangle. Okay, only from qubit, someone might be able to call it. But from test rectangle, so I want to allow actually clone to be working there. What should I be doing then? If I want to just simply enable clone to work right what should i be doing it's not sufficient to just say uh, implement clonable right we also have to say at the rate override okay and we'll say public 
object clone okay and we'll say super dot clone oh. we'll have to say return super dot clone you use the clone method of the object class so the clone is there how to create a copy that logic is there in the object class but it would not work unless you have to you have said this is clonable also since you are saying super dot clone we will need to put a throws okay by doing this i am enabling the clone for objects of the Okay, you have made it public now. Okay, the idea is you have made the method to be a public method available outside the package geometry dot shapes. Okay, so anyone would now be able to create a clone of a rectangle. by making it public. The idea is to override and make it public. Okay. Fine. Logic, how to create a copy of an object? Oh, that's there in the object class. Super dot clone. Use the clone method of the object class. You may just say, let me use the clone super dot clone. But you have not said it implements clonable. You have not made it clonable. Okay. Fine. If you have not made it clonable, then it's going to be an error. Okay. Fine. Uh, want to try this very quickly about the clone method. Okay. So let's say we over. Fine. We have done this, and let's compile this code. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Those are now private. What have we done? Okay. Uh, I think we use them directly in the rectangle dot Java. Yeah. Acha R is not on. Okay. We had compiled it earlier, right? And we thought it would be working. equals method okay i think yeah so in the equals method where is that equals method Achha, okay yeah yeah uh, we commented out this right r was defined in this okay but we didn't change the code below right now this code for this to work what should be done What should be done for this to start working? Is equal to cast into a rectangle. Oh. Okay. And so rest of the code should work here. Yeah. So after this comment here, yeah, we didn't compile. Okay. And uh, because of this comment, the variable r disappeared for us, right? Okay. And that variable r which is there, and that's not available. So that was the error we have got. And let's compile again then. Yeah, it's compiling. Okay. Uh, we haven't used it. Now, I can just quickly use it with J shell. Now, if you want to use on J shell, the classes of our package, outside the Java's library, okay, minus, minus class path, 
I think it's minus single minus only in the between dot dot backslash bin okay so start with this minus class path then J shell when you start with minus class path uh, so from the bit folder whatever classes are available so that geometry dot shapes is there so I can now say import And I should then be able to say, okay, let me have a rectangle R1 equals new rectangle 7 by 5. Okay, it has created the rectangle of 7 by 5. Okay, and uh, let's say object O. Uh, you want it to be assigned to a rectangle only when we, we are interested in using the clone r2 equals and see if i write just uh, saying okay r1 dot clone okay what do you think what is the return type for clone method Return type for clone method is object. Okay, we cannot be assigning it to a rectangle. Find the type on the right hand side is an object. Okay, so here we will have to use a. So you can see this is an error, right? So you'll have to use the casting. Okay, cast into rectangle. We understand that since we are doing it on rectangle object, the clone would have created a rectangle, and we can cast it safely. So, yeah, R2 is also a rectangle of sign by sign. So, yes, you want to enable cloning. The way out is, what our class definition? Make it clonable by saying implements clonable. Right? Implement the clone method by using super dot equal, uh, super dot clone. Okay? And just return super dot clone. So, the logic of creating a copy is there in the object clone method of object class. Okay. Fine. If we didn't make it clonable, this would be an error. Okay. If we didn't, we may just override a clone method. That's fine. But if you don't make it clonable, that same clone method would be giving us an error. Okay. Fine. So, here we have created, uh, fine. we have de defined this class called rectangle. We have defined a subclass called cuboid. Fine. And we have seen overriding of the four of the methods of the object class. Okay. Uh, the clone method not always to be overridden. You decide whether you would allow cloning or not. Okay. Another thing which is related to this clone method, let me explain. The clone method by default is using, it is a shallow cloning. We say this is a shallow cloning. Okay, what do we understand by shallow cloning? Okay, fine, let's see. Shallow cloning and deep cloning, what's the difference? Okay. So, if we talk of clone, okay. fine. So, clone method would work like this. Uh, okay, now just to explain the difference between shallow and deep cloning. Let's take the example of cuboid with composition. Or even if I take uh, example of the account class. Okay. Someone says let's make account clonable and let's create a clone of the account class. Okay. If I look at an object of account class, this is my account AC. Let's say this is AC. Fine. It refers to an object of account and how does the object of account look like? Or it looks like it has a account number. What's the second? Name. Oh, we have a name. What is name? String type? String. Reference type? That means it is having a reference to a string object. Okay. Where the name would be there. Something like this. Okay. Some name. That string is there. 
Okay, and it has a balance. Right? I say, let me create, so uh, I want to create a clone of this. So when a clone of this would be created, it will simply copy this. That means it's going to create a clone where it copies this value here, okay, where it copies this reference here. That means this would refer to the same string object. Okay, and it would have the balance field. Okay, this is what is shallow cloning. What would be deep cloning? A deep cloning would mean if I come across any field which is another object, I should have a clone of that object also separately. It, this shouldn't be referring here, but should have created a clone of this. So a clone of this object should have been created separately, right? Fine with the same thing, okay? Fine. And then you would have been referring here. So they are two independent objects. That is what would be there if it is deep cloning. Okay, shallow cloning and deep cloning, the difference would be like this. Arrays are clonable. Arrays are clonable. Arrays of a reference type, right? So if it is an array of a, you can call clone method on array. Any array object is there, you can call the clone method anytime. Okay, when you don't have to worry about that protected thing or public thing. For arrays, yes, it will work. Clone would work. Okay. Right. See, uh, let's take example of an array. Right? If it's an array of a primitive type, the clone is creating a separate copy for me. But if it's an array of a reference type, let's say here is a Area of, oh, I have got names here. Okay, that's an array of string. And this is going to have an array with maybe, let's keep less number of elements here. Okay, one, two. Okay, uh, there are four elements in this. So there is one string over here, another string object here. Okay, a third string object is here, and a fourth string object is here. Now, if you create a clone of this array, okay clone of names okay so that let's say we have a variable and we would assign it into names two names uh, yeah names one let's say so there's some other object right i'm saying oh, it's a clone of this what would be done a copy of this object would be created that means it's going to create a copy like this which has again got four references okay but each one is referring to the same strings which was there right? so it's a exact copy of this part basically this is what is copied here okay and so the same objects available from the other place this will be available here yeah so object class clone method is doing a shallow cloning that you should remember so another reason why clone method may be overridden is because we would like to have a deep cloning okay and the keyword class which uses composition it has an a rectangle object fine if you create a clone of that fine the same rectangle object is going to be shared by the clone you want it to have a separate object of rectangle let them be detached fine so for that reason, that's, so that's another reason for overriding the clone method. So clone method, one, to make it public, okay, and override so that we can make it public. And other reason, we want uh, to actually implement the deep cloning. Fine, clear? Fine, so any questions on this? Fine. We have seen the methods of the object class now. Okay. Fine. The methods. 
yeah. Uh, yeah. The... Sub objects will be shared. Okay. Same you... object becomes available to both of them. So it's a sharing. Mm -hmm. It's a copy, but the reference is also, it's simply copying the reference and not creating a copy of the objects referred from the earlier object. Fine. Uh, I, I don't get a copy of the strings here, right? So it's not creating a separate. So th there are four strings which are there in the array earlier. There are no new strings created. There will be only four strings, though it's another array. Yeah. Okay. This is a separate array. Of course, later the reference from this array can be changed and updated to refer to some different object. That's a different thing. Okay. But when you call the clone method, yes, another new array, same number of elements, but all of them referring to the same objects which were referred from the array being cloned. Cuboid which uses composition has a rectangle object. Right? You create a clone, the same rectangle object is used from the other one because that's a shallow cloning. So when you override equals uh, the clone method for the cuboid which uses composition, you would take care that yes, there is a rectangle involved and I must create a clone of that rectangle fine, and keep it here. And not use the same rectangle. So after saying super dot clone, you would also be calling the clone on the rectangle and replacing it. Okay. And so clone method has to do deep cloning. If you want it to make a deep cloning, then you can do that also. Okay. Fine. Fine. So clear. Any questions? <coughs> 